Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 42 of my lower league management playthrough in Football Manager 2016 with FC United. And here I'm just on our club screen just to show you a few things so you can see how it progresses as well. Maybe a year from now and I'll show it every year and you can kind of see the development in estimated value, even the season ticket holders, media prediction for the division we're in. I'd like to keep going with consecutive promotions. I'd like to think I can improve the team enough every single season uh, we'll just have to see how it goes though don't want to get too ahead of myself uh, but as you can see you're probably looking at Alfie Potter our key player who is he <laughs> I've never heard of him before and he's our key player suddenly so what happened is James Catton decided to leave because basically we weren't playing him enough I told him I was going to play him more but then he just left after I said that a couple days later and yeah I just searched quickly uh, for a left winger and actually he can play both right wing and left wing naturally which is absolutely fantastic especially that his preferred moves he cuts inside from both wings and runs with ball often very very nice uh, there he's got 15 dribbling uh, 16 flare and he's pretty quick what 13 pace 13 agility 12 acceleration that's decent uh, for this level of football he's 29 years of age uh, he starts in league two as you can see so that's a big signing most definitely but he never played too much really so he never really did so bad he competed like last time he was League 2, a few seasons ago, Northampton, he only started one game, came off the bench five times, still had an average rating of 7.07, .07, so that's not terrible. And the next season went out on loan, or the same season, I should say, he went out on loan to FC Halifax. He, he only started, he only played three games, scored two times, and that was it. And then the following season, yes, he was let go on a free transfer. And you look, Vanarama Conference, that's the league we're in now, only got 6.43 rating. And yeah, you probably think, nah, he's dropping now, not that good. But that was in the league, yeah? He only started one game. So once again, he wasn't given opportunity. But in the cup games, he scored two goals. So I think, yeah, he slipped through the cracks a little bit here. He could be a really good player for us. And before I forget it, there's some... Uh, team that's in Football Manager, I wanted to mention that a couple of you guys have said in the comments, it is the FFA Center of Excellence, formerly known as the Australian Institute of Sport. Obviously, I know about this. Uh, it's not really a club in real life. It's like an institute, like I said, Australian Institute of Sport. It's not specifically a football club or anything. It's uh, where a lot of young athletes, uh, depending what sport, uh, they play, yeah, they go to it, and it's a, a very good training facility and everything like that. I noticed a few people mentioned in the comments recently, uh, like, telling me to check it out. Like, <laughs> it's funny because I obviously know about it, and they have really good facilities and, yeah, extensive youth recruitment, superb training and youth facilities. I'm really glad that was in the game. Obviously, I've known about this for years. It's been in the game for a few years now. Uh, when, when it was the Australian Institute of Sport as well. I was just wondering why people suddenly were suggesting it now because, yeah, as I said, I obviously knew about that. But um, what I did want to say is, unfortunately, those players don't want to join. If I go to approach to sign, yeah, they don't want to move to a different country unless you can offer them a full-time deal, which we can't at the minute. Maybe once I get to League 2 and we can be more of a full-time uh, kind of club, uh, I'll see when that will be the case because you go to the board and make the request, can't you? Can you go to networking or personal? I don't think you can because or oh, professional status in finances. Yeah, uh, under professional status to be more professional club apart from semi-professional. So that was the case there. And don't forget our training facilities are improving. Uh, the board are wanting to improve though. Well, I wanted to and they're in the process of improving. So that's why I want the balance still to be all right, you know, because I don't want that just to stop when the board says, oh, we don't have enough money to complete that, even though it's already agreed and kind of in the process. But yes, I think I covered all of that, that uh, James Catton, he did leave and we did bring in a new guy that's probably better. <laughs> without a doubt. He's our key player now, so how about that? So I just want to update you guys on that 100%. You can see James Catton going out and also Alfie Potter coming in. So those changes are being made and he's come straight into the team because he's outstanding 
like outstandingly better than anyone else in that position. Again, reports, and he suits that role more than some others as well. We'll go to uh, left attacking midfield, and again, clearly better. But don't forget, Matthew Williamson is more a young lad, and he's probably our highest potential guy at team. 14 pace, 16 acceleration, so no doubt he's a future player for us. But we need to get into the games because we've got a couple to play today. So this is going to be a longer episode. And if you do go on to enjoy it, please, let's smash that 200 likes once again. And we'll see how we go in this episode. Two big, big games. So Alfie Potter making impact right away, hopefully. We need to give him that sharpness. So I want to give him as much time as he can because I want him to maybe help us in the next game as well. Maybe give him 60 minutes or so. And also Ed Harris, unfortunately, he's going to be missing for both games. He's amassed 10 yellow cards already this season. So he's banned for the next two English matches. So he'll be missing. But Carl Gruno comes in and he's not terrible. He's another guy with decent potential working on the jumping reach. That's going up. That's good. Potential uh, League 2. So yeah, we're working really well. Driscoll's going to play here today and also Robinson both guys that do want to play a bit more and you can see role the suitability there it's pretty pretty good for the role and duty so we are going to be starting Jack Phillips also attacking midfield we dropped out Nassery but Alfie Potter will just give him the next available number that is not the unlucky 13 we'll give him the 22 and I really think he can flourish in this division like I showed you with the stats he's been performing well from the games he's played so far in this save and what we're going to do here assertively, and say we've been on a good run lately, just, I'm not sure whether to say that once again, I won't go, oh, I'll say passionately actually, go out there and give these fans their money's worth, okay, Jack Phillips is stressed, what, see some, yeah, some talks, they don't really make sense, sure, you can still get a bad reaction, not saying that at all, okay, we turn that around, that's absolutely fantastic, and George Maris, What's the odds that he's going to score in this game after we do give him a bit of a talk as well? Uh, he hasn't scored yet for us at all. Never. <laughs> Apart from the under-21s, but that doesn't really count. He's doing well in training, no doubt. And I'll go back to mixed crosses, of course. I only change it to float when we play that target man guy. But Liam Davis is back from his injury. Again, I'd like to bring him on at some point. Maybe 25 minutes or so, 20 minutes. And maybe he can play a part in the re replay in the FA Cup, which will be harder in the next game because it is away from home compared to the first game. But keeping a clean sheet at home against them will give me confidence. Okay. I really want to see what Alfie Potter does, though. He's he's our key... Again, according to the game, he's our key player now, which is really, really funny that the game thinks a key player for you is... Sure, maybe he's our best-rated player, but it's like... He hasn't played a game for us yet, so I don't think, even if he's that quality, I don't think he can be labelled our key player on just a couple days after he joins. So I'm all caught up in this FA Cup kind of situation, but this game is huge. If we win here, get the three points, we'll be top. From Borhad and Wood, we're going to leapfrog them. If we, <laughs> if we win, we are. So this is huge game in itself. A huge episode. In the context, oh, I say in the context of the season, obviously still a lot of games to play, but yeah, getting that position will be good for the mindset of the players. Unfortunately, not too much is happening, but I know we're like looking so much into the next game. Or maybe just before half time, Robinson whip this in, Minahan. Oh, we get a corner. Yep, good chance. I think they'll be here, Minahan. Look, there's a few players around that side. Oh, okay. Oh no, they're gonna win the ball back and. <laughs> I did not think about that at all. Firefield, nah, no, not like this. Not like this. I thought that would have been one of those countering from a corner situations where we concede, but luckily we did avoid that. Robinson, he won the ball well there. Now it's Richards. Goes back to Heaton now. Now Simpson did well. Come on, Phillips, win this. Uh, Simpson, what are you going to do? Gruno. Okay, this is all right. Maris, do something. See, he's not bad in this situation, Maris. He just can't score. He can pass well, create opportunity. Hopefully, we can eventually get the breakthrough. Look, oh, out wide on the left. Oh, that was the right idea, Maris. It came to him too quickly. Why didn't he aim far post? Maybe he could have scored to the right side of the keeper. But either way, you know, apart from that, not too much happened in that half. We'll just say assertively, I'm far from pleased from what I've seen here. Uh, from the team, what I saw from the team. Again, Mika Evans now looking stressed. I'll just say, you weren't that bad. You can improve. I have faith in you. Okay, he's still stressed, apparently. 
That's not good. The good sign here, though, is we are having the better of possession. I don't know whether, say, dominating possession, well, we were 57% there, and the passes also. Of course, 75% completed, but the amount of passes, uh, we've got quite a few more. Look, 209 to 269. So that's a bit more, 60 more passes. I don't know whether we should make a change. I think we should, though. Like, I'm still, again, keeping the next game in mind. Mika Evans, I think we may take him off and we'll bring on Wayne Brooksby. Uh, Matt Robinson, I think we're going to take him off and we're going to bring on Sam Walker. Make a couple of changes there, see if we'll make. Just, yeah, freshen up midfield and out wide also. Uh, Brooksby, again, he's another player that wants to play a bit more. And both the lads coming on look happy. A bit more experienced heads as well. Maybe they can create something for us create an opportunity, utilize the possession a bit more. I think I'll go for a team talk before something happens. <laughs> I'll go assertively and I'm going to say demand more. Maybe we could create an opportunity. See, I wouldn't mind, but I guess Boram would, wouldn't mind as well at the same time. Oh, like if it finished like this, I'm going to go attacking now though. I, ideally, I think we would want to win this at home for us or I'd like to see a opportunity at least created. But I think I'm going to do what I said, George Maris. Maybe he just, he can't score. <laughs> oh, I'll go to Liam Davis. Maybe he'll be back. Give him some, give him some minutes, around 20 minutes. And then maybe he could potentially start the next game. He's the striker we have faith in. I think someone even suggested uh, like a strikerless tactic. But yeah, Liam Davis has been smashing them in when he's playing. Okay, Potter, he's got to do this. Minahan, Firefield, yeah, play it through now, Walker, opportunity, put it in, oh, he had to cross that earlier, that was a great opportunity, but we will get it back here, it's Simpson, Potter, he gave it away, couldn't make the pass there, so I guess, yeah, Potter's gonna have a full game here, now Davis, oh, play it through, Brooksby, Brooksby, oh, Potter! What a finish on debut. Alfie Potter, where are you coming from? And he scores. <laughs> oh, what an impact. Yes, come on. We're top. We are top. And how about that finish? Brooksby, it's looking a bit dark here. Uh, Brooksby, though. Yeah, that was a good ball to Potter. And he finished that really well. The ball by Brooksby, who we bring on, Excellent. Now, we'll go back to standard. And again, team talk after that. We'll go assertively. Just concentrate now and hopefully hold on to the points. Okay, 10 minutes left and there's a highlight. They've got a throw in. They're going to whip it in. Minahan does well. Brooksby. Okay, I thought we could potentially counter, but it's Barnett. Barnett, all this excitement could be for nothing, but Simpson, a great challenge. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Come on. We just, we just scored not too long ago. Does that mean we'll go back attacking, I guess? See, that's a really good challenge by Simpson. And it went straight back to them. That's the way it goes, though. So, oh, that's... Uh, no, it is disappointing. It's disappointing because I felt we could have had the points and probably deserve them. And now they've got a free kick. Don't tell me we're going to lose like this. No, okay, we deal with it. But it could be the same situation again. No, Barnett... He's a danger, and it's a low cross again. I'm glad they didn't score from that because it would just be, yeah, one of those situations again uh, from a cross just coming in. It's just, they were annoying to concede with the majority of the goals. You oh, no, that's an error by Gruno. How are we going to lose? <laughs> we were winning. Oh, no, I guess that's why they're the best team so far this season. I'm not going to complain about it. Gruno, I'm, I'm not, I thought about it for a second, I thought about it to a second to kind of blame it on him, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, if it was a different kind of situation, like if we didn't score, I think I could have, but yeah, like I felt like I'm still caught up in those reactions, the reaction from me scoring, like I thought we were going to win this, like <laughs> I don't believe we've lost it here. Obviously, it's going to sink in now that we have. Like, I was reacting to the goal from Potter, and then just suddenly, we're unlucky there. They gain confidence from that, I suppose. But it's like, I'm not sure if their focus... Uh, I say Maybe their focus drifted, but I said concentrate. As a manager, I can't do more to tell them to focus. I said what I can, but if they did that, 
there's not much more I can do. And that's the difference now. Look, just look at the complexion. If we held on to that one nil, oh my God. And now we're just five points away from them and we drop down to third. Just in 10 minutes of football, look how much it changed. And guys, we get a really big injury here and from a training session. Look at this. He, what's this? A torn groin muscle for three months. That's huge. Now, I almost feel I have that injury getting a big one like that to a pretty key player um, from a sprint session. He, oh, well, w what can I say about that? Of course, three months injury. I'm not going to just let him go because, like, end his loan deal because he's still going to come back and play a part later in the season. But yeah, that, that really hurts. Like I said, I feel like I have the same injury. That's how much it hurts. Hurts our chances. But it allows someone potential. I know not to start, but uh, like Sean O'Neill. It could have been the same situation if I loaned him out. I couldn't recall him like Henry Collins. So he may make an impact, at least from the bench. Oh no, Alfie Potter's cup tied. Get... <laughs> Oh, that's so annoying. I didn't expect it because I didn't realize he played in the cup. And he's not going to be able to be used. Well, then. So, <laughs> okay, we're going to have to plan out who's going to come in. Maybe Matthew Williamson. Yet, let the young lad come through. Well, a lot of just unexpected things uh, here. Sean O'Neill... We we'll just take him off from playing under 21s because, of course, Jack Phillips is probably going to be starting there, but we need someone to come off the bench. And then Adam Cunnington, I guess he'll come the backup striker now. It's just, oh, that's that's annoying. Oh, we've got two strikers on the bench, but uh, yeah, I don't know who else I'm going to put. Maybe nah, David Quinn actually. David Quinn instead of Cunnington. And actually, we're just going to have to go with Liam Davis to start. We need that scoring type. Uh, considering Potter's cup tied now, that's that's a bit disappointing. But again. That, that kind of thing is out of my control. It's not like an injury or something, but again, oh, that's yeah two major things for the next game, most definitely. Interesting for Barnsley. They expect a low FA Cup turner, but of course for us, at, when it's a home game, it's supposed to be huge for us. So that's going to be... Uh, look at this. FC United will be backed by a decent number of traveling supporters with around 100 fans expected. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's huge for us, 100 fans uh, in away from home. But who knows? Anything can happen. But now we're back for the FA Cup replay, this time away from home against Barnsley. Uh, it's definitely going to be more tough now. I can feel it. I, f I feel like less excited. I, I, it's like you're almost anticipating defeat. You know that feeling. But the thing is, if we do beat them... I want you to, we're playing like another team, like already the draw for the next round um, has been. So I'm not sure if we click on that. Yeah, Maidenhead, you can see their second round. And don't forget, they're in the Vanarama Conference South, but they're playing really well. They're first at the minute. So I'd be playing a team on form. Even though they're only expected to finish mid-table, we may have technically a better squad. But anyway, we need to focus on this game. Uh, but as I said, I'm really, I am anticipating defeat, especially with our new great signing, Alfie Potter. He showed that, uh, scored on debut. Uh, what more can I say? And Ed Harris, one of our better defenders as well, missing. And we're forced to play Kyle Gruno. See, basically, Ed Harris, if he was playing, he wouldn't have made that stupid error. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, it's so annoying when realizing the situation that we probably wouldn't have conceded and we at least would have got a draw out of the last game. But, again, that happens in football. Um, your best players are not going to play every single game. And that will affect you uh, like it has done. But Liam Davis is back. Hopefully, after this game, he'll be fully fit. And, yeah, who knows? Maybe something special will happen here. And, again, we're not going tacking, just standard away from home. I'd like to think they'll go for it a bit more and maybe we can get them on the counter. Don't really know. But we'll go assertively and say, yeah, I'll go out there and impress everyone. Just everyone who's watching this, impress them. This time, yeah, Jack Phillips. That's the reaction you're supposed to get. So I feel someone like that, they get reactions a lot of the time. Other people, they're just like, listen keenly or whatever. But someone like Jack Phillips, he reacts a lot. It's either like a bad reaction or a good reaction. He just doesn't listen keenly all the time, which is good, I suppose. So now, early chance, it's Cool Thrist. 
This is probably what we wouldn't want. An early goal conceded. Emmanuel Thomas bared makes the uh, expected save there near post. So well done. Now it's Whittingham with the corner. That was Zakuani. Uh, didn't look likely. This would be a huge boost though. If we can win. Somehow, but Barnsley, you can just see the domination, the difference, the difference in this game. They're definitely going for a bit more, but now it's a free kick. Maybe! Oh, this is what we needed! It's a peno! Who's going to step up to take it, though? Minahan. He is decent. You think a defender stepping up, but he's still one of our better pen takers. Minahan. He's had a good season, and he scores! Sam Minahan. Second goal of the season. Oh, my God. This has given me a bit more confidence. Like I said before the game, I was anticipating uh, that we may lose this game and get knocked out. But we're in a good position to advance now. Minahan with the early goal. See, that's exactly what we needed. We needed that early chance. And now the thing is, what do I do for the rest of the game? <laughs> I think we have to just leave it for now because we haven't really seen a sign that we're going to... I know they had corner, something like that, but... And a shot. Uh, was saved near post. Nothing too clear as of yet. So and we scored. So we gotta we gotta keep going like that. Uh, go assertively though. And last time you say concentrate, you concede. It's uh, it's like I'm avoiding saying that. I'm gonna say tighten up more. At least just tells them to yeah be a bit more defensive. But I feel as though because that changes the complexion of what's happening. So we'll have to see. If we can get into half time, okay. Here's the highlight. And we have the ball though. Now don't give it away. I want to see what happens here. Yeah, we give it straight to them. I was just, like, anticipating, and no doubt they'll score from this. I, I know. Ugh. I know. It's like, we're just waiting for it to happen here. It's going to happen. Okay, they go all the way back to Mawson. Maybe it won't. <laughs> I don't know. It's Boateng now. Creating the opportunity. Minahan. Okay, but again, keeps going back to them. But it's, uh, what can you do? We're just defending. It's like, we're defending each opportunity. Gardner. Whittingham. Got to keep prevent. We're doing well there. We force them back a few times until they get into the crossing position and score. That's... What's the point? What's the point in getting mad? It was coming. But see, we... It's like... Oh, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. It's like we defend all those opportunities. Oh, it, it hurts that we concede in that fashion. I felt we did so well to defend. And we could be going in to half-time losing here if they score from this opportunity. And it would feel wrong. He's going to do it again. It's the same guy. It's winning him. It's another cross. And we clear it this time. Oh, I was just imagining that going over the top. It's McGugan. And it's again, this guy exploiting. They're exploiting it now. Yep, well done for exploiting the crosses. Yep, and they're probably going to go on to win now. And once again, we get the first goal, and then it's like, yeah, it's, what can I say? What can I say? We get the first goal, and then it just falls to pieces. I get so excited, and then it just feels like seconds later, not even a minute, and we're behind. Just like that. And from the same kind of goals, from crosses, again, people don't like you complaining about things, but like, how am I, what do you expect me to react like, be happy and celebrate for them. It's like, yes, they scored. Come on, man. What am I supposed to do? It's so frustrating. Show me something else. Okay. Firefield is de demotivated. Yeah, I'm demotivated as well. I actually am. Like, it, it almost feels unfair. It feels un unfair on me conceding through... Uh, this way all the time and it's again so you know it's just I have like a couple private saves I'm actually playing and I concede so much from that so it's not just my tactics as well it's so not for a specific save where maybe you need to stop those it happens all the time and it's so annoying and I guess I'm only getting so mad about it now because it's a crucial situation at least that guy's injured now yeah you get what you deserve dungeon <laughs> fucking dungeon oh no assertively what do I say now we might as well go attacking we need a goal all or nothing now we'll go okay we'll wait a second then we'll go instructions oh they're on float crosses I don't want that um what are we gonna do we'll just go more direct 
maybe be more expressive as well. But yeah, I gotta. I see uh, my expectations were lowered a bit. <laughs> uh, like, oh no, I don't even know if that's right. Like, like I said, I wasn't going into this game expect. I was expecting to lose, but then when we scored, I got a bit more excited. You know. Ugh. Uh, like, if they scored first, I was just like, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. Cool, Thrish. Could they score? Could they score? Oh, nah. Uh, uh, did you know why they didn't score there? Because it wasn't, like, from a cross. So, yeah, they didn't score there. So, again, we're just going to make some changes. I think we almost have to... say, like I, I would say almost accept defeat. We're only one goal away from them. Liam Davis doesn't look like scoring. We'll bring on George Maris. Maybe he can be impacted as a super sub. I don't... <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, Jack Phillips, unfortunately, going to take him off. Sean O'Neill, the youngster. Maybe he'll come on and do something. Fullbacks might as well go on attack now. And see, see, like, now I'm not so serious, like, with the, like, funny things, like, I'm trying to say, like, when they didn't score, when it, because it wasn't a crossing opportunity, it's like, yeah, don't take that too seriously, I'm just, like, a bit mad because of what, or how this game has played out, and we get a deserved penalty easily, well, not easily, like, yeah, we get a deserved penalty in the first half, oh, and again, they just give it straight to him, luckily we win it back, though, Maris, do something, please. Please, Williamson, cross, Maris, score! Fuck, oh, man. He's had a lot of opportunities. And then Williamson gives away. See, we had a crossing opportunity there. But interesting that we didn't score. Okay, team talk time. Passionately. Show some passion. Can we get a goal? Until the game ends, as long as it's only a one goal difference, the game is not over. 100%. And we need to make one more change. We'll make one more change. Okay, who's going to come on? It's It has to be a game winner. I think Wayne Brooksby could be that. I think Mika Evans is going to come off. Bring in Brooksby and we'll go attacking. Might as well here. Could we just completely go all out? Might as well. There's 20 minutes. Come on, we'll go shoot on site. We'll look for the overlap. Uh, we'll go higher defensive line. Again, we'll take more risk. It's all or nothing right now. We'll go narrow with, against exploit the middle, pump the ball into the box. Everything attacking <laughs> right now. Roam from positions is on. Let's just go for it. Don't forget, this is... Uh, if you think about it in this way, this is not a terrible result if it ends 2-1. Like, because they're league... That's too good. They're, they're league one, yeah? Like, so, away from home, like that other team, they lost 5-1. So, but now they've got a free kick and bad saves. So, we could potentially still create opportunity here. Bad. Okay, just... Uh, I guess you can see the idea there. We get it back, though. Williamson, he does okay. You can see he's cool on the ball there. But, oh, Neil. What? This is going to be a chance for them and Emmanuel Thomas, and they do eventually score through a well-worked opportunity. But, again, it was it was because of our error. It was just a player error, O'Neill, and he's probably not going to get many chances. Oh, you know, with the injury, he probably is going to get chances. And the other O'Neill plays it through to J. Emmanuel Thomas, but... It's probably a realistic result. If we beat them, it would seem unrealistic. So, yeah, you can't really beat these kind of teams and face, like, yeah, go through this round and face, like, a Premier League team unless you obviously do some tampering, but <laughs> we won't get into that. We'll just end the game here, I suppose. Even if it's a late highlight where nothing's going to come from it. See, Williamson, it's like he didn't even want to score almost. And that's why I don't like these games. <laughs> that's why I kind of don't like recording these games because I know I'm going to get frustrated and, again, probably say things I would probably want to take back. But, yeah, what can you do? I'll just say we're just unlucky. We'll move on and, uh, yeah, sorry, we couldn't win, I guess. But it's it's annoying because I know I always get frustrated in these kind of games because I want to go so far and have that dream of facing someone like, I know, like a Manchester City or Manchester United, but that that just it it simply doesn't happen. It simply doesn't happen. But hopefully you enjoyed it. At least we lose two important games. I envision this going much better.
<laughs> maybe in my dreams we could have won both of them but again we were going on a good run so you can only go on that good run uh, for so long but i hope you guys enjoyed it drop that like on the video also and i'll see you guys next time